Okay, now we can start with logistic regression. So um, remember the problem with uh, linear regression, right? So what we were trying to do in linear regression is determine a continuous variable. Um, and of course, we can't do that if we have um, a, a prediction for identifying whether there's a, a, a picture is a picture of a cat or a dog or whether a patient is healthy or, or uh, sick, right? Um, there's no differences or regular loss functions didn't work. Um, but there's an, uh, so, and we determined a, a better loss function, this cross entropy loss that we have up here. Um, but there's another problem. What do we use as output in our um, classification uh, system? So we've already kind of hinted at what we're going to do here because everything here is written in terms of probabilities. So instead of returning a continuous variable that could be between zero and plus infinity or minus infinity and plus infinity, um, instead of doing that, we're, we're going to return a probability. And so we have to turn our linear combination of weights and input features, weights multiplied by input features plus some bias, which we used in linear regression, we have to turn this linear component, um, they're actually the log of the odds um, is what they're called, we have to turn this into odds and those odds into a probability p. So our probability p is 1 over 1 plus um, the uh, exponential of minus or linear combination plus our bias, or weights multiplied by the input features plus bias. So this is a, a probability. You'll see that this is indeed between 0 and 1. Um, so uh, it, it, it's the, 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 it behaves like a probability. Um, and so that's what we're going to use. Uh, so any training input x or any input x will return a probability between 0 and 1, um, which is exactly what we want our, um, our probabilities to behave like. Um, the other thing which we will encounter, so this is a probability for a single output variable. Um, in the case of multiple output variables, let's say we're really trying to not distinguish cats and dogs, but we're trying to determine whether something is a cat, a dog, um, a, a traffic light, or a, a car, then we'll have to have a probability associated with each of those four predictions. And in that case, there's another mathematical trick we can use to turn three values into a normalized set, uh, four values into a normalized set um, of probabilities. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on to, uh, to the example um, of uh, our diabetes um, data set. Uh, what we're going to be using is a, a different package for data analysis, Pandas. Um, it's very similar to NumPy, uh, NumPy. Um, you'll see it, it does very similar things, but it's a little bit more generic in the sense that it doesn't just work with continuous real number or complex number variables, but it can also contain um, categorical variables. For example, the, um, the, the, the classifiers between you know, male, female in the case of a, um, a, a, a healthcare context. So in the linear regression um, problem that we solved earlier, uh, in, in the previous lecture, um, we actually had to reclassify male and female into a numerical score. So here we're not going to have to do that if we use pandas, which has a lot of support for that. So we'll load pandas, um, we'll download this, this diabetes comma separated values file, and we'll read it in into pandas with this read, dot, read underscore CSV file um, function. Okay, so in my case, it doesn't need to download it. If you run this, you'll see that it actually will uh, will download that file. Um, and it's a relatively small file, but uh, it, it's nice that it's available online so we don't have to distribute files through this uh, Google worksheet, uh, Google notebook. Um, we can um, look at the first entries. Um, there's a function in pandas head that gives us the first five entries. And as you can see, this looks quite nice. Um, Compared to NumPy, um, and there's a, there's a you know it looks more like a table, right? So and as you can see, um, there's there's numbers here, there's uh, um, uh, there, there's a, uh, floating point numbers, um, body mass index, um, but then there's also just counting numbers um, and other types of classifiers, skin thickness. Uh, I don't even know what that would be. Um, 
one thing we're actually not showing here, there is no uh, uh, classification or categorical variables here, which um, which pandas would actually be able to support better than NumPy. So at least in this case, you might not think that this looks very different from NumPy. Um, and then the last column here is our outcome variable. Um, so that is whether this patient, um, I think, uh, had uh, diabetes or not. I'm actually not familiar with the content or with the interpretation of the data set. Um, but the, the goal here in our um, logistic regression problem is to take the input variables here from number of pregnancies, glucose, blood pressure, skin, skin thickness, insulin levels, body mass index, and then this pedigree function which looks at hereditary factors and age. And we want to determine the outcome. We want to predict the outcome. Um, the other thing that Pandas allows us to do is just look at that whole data frame, which is the structure that is used here um, at a glance. So you'll see that there's 768 entries. Um, there's, there's nine columns, nine variables here, um, or features. Pregnancies is, you know, all of those features are filled for all of the variables. If some of them were missing, you would see um, a, uh, a smaller number here, for example, in insulin. Um, you see what type they are, so 64-bit integers or 64-bit floating point numbers for body mass index and a pedigree function. Now, the real power of, of pandas is in uh, working with those um, categorical variables. And so outcome, in a sense, is a categorical variable, right? It's either 0 or 1. Um, there's there's, in, there's uh, um, diabetes or not. So what we can do is just do things like grouping all entries by outcome and look at how many there are. So um, there's 500 entries that did not have diabetes and there's 268 entries where there is diabetes or where we're, we find a one in that outcome field. Um, while we're introducing new packages, I also wanted to point out that there's other, um, other packages for plotting um, so we can use Seaborn, for example, instead of matplotlib, which we've been working with through the entire course. Um, the beauty of Python is that it allows you to pick whatever package um, you find uh, or whatever module you find most useful for your, um, for your purposes. And so oftentimes there's uh, communities that form around, you know, let's say Seaborn, and there's communities that form around matplotlib um, and that... Uh, um, that have benefits uh, that, or those plotting packages have certain benefits um, for those communities. So in this case, if you're working with categorical data, um, doing something like uh, working with Seaborn might make sense because one of the things you'll see is that with just a single line, you get a pretty good plot that already has um, the labels on the X and the Y axis. You don't have to do plt.x label or plt.y label for this anymore. Okay, enough about plotting. Now let's go to our um, scikit-learn model selection. Let's split our data, diabetes, um, into uh, a training and test data set. Um, and so by default, it does this in a 75% to 25% ratio. We'll want to do this for our training, uh, for our input features, which are all of the columns except those columns where column is equal to uh, where the column name is outcome. So this is um, diabetes columns not equal to outcome will return a list of columns to include that only includes the first eight columns here. So what this uh, um, what this first line here will do is it will select just the eight first columns. This will be the ninth column. That's the output variable. Um, we we'll want to stratify this. It doesn't necessarily ma um, mean much. And random state just sets the random seed so that when you run this, you should get the exact same values. Um, so we have our training set um, input features, our test set input features, our training set um, targets, and our test set targets. Okay. So let's fill that out. Um, we can look at those. Uh, at that training data set, um, for example. So what you see is that we've lost this outcome column here, since that's in our target, Y. Um, and 
the the the, tab, the the rows have been shuffled around so i didn't even have to specify this here it automatically will shuffle things around so that you don't end up with situations where all of the first 500 entries in the file are actually the healthy patients and the last 268 are the unhealthy patients and so when you train you're essentially training on your healthy patients and no wonder it doesn't work on the test data set so that's why we shuffle this around um, okay so now let's go to um, lo logistic regression here um, we import this model call it log reg um, and fit it to our training data or input features and our target variables and what we get out, of course, is a set of coefficients. Those are our weights that are multiplied by each of the eight um, input features, right? So pregnancies is multiplied with this number. Um, glucose is multiplied with this number. Blood pressure is multiplied with this number. Um, so that kind of should give us a sense of what is important, what isn't, what has a positive correlation, what has a negative correlation. Um, but I think you'll agree with me that this is difficult to tell um, and certainly isn't as easy to tell um, as in the case of a linear regression model. Now that we've trained our model though, we can uh, apply it to, um, uh, to new data. So let's take our, our test input features and let's pick here with I log zero um, colon. This will just print um, the, uh, the first entry in our test set, okay? And I'll turn this with two lists to just a list of numbers. That will be a NumPy array. And I'll reshape it to a, a purely one-dimensional NumPy array. Um, and I'll feed that into um, my logistic regression, my trained algorithm, and give me the predicted probabilities. So what we get is, so that's our, our first entry here. Um, that's the, the first entry in our test data set. Those are all the input features. Um, now we turn everything into a set of, uh, in, into a, um, a list of numbers that we, pre we create our prediction. So the prediction for zero has 41% um, probability and the prediction one has 59% probability. Um, and so if we were to make a, a prediction um, based on the, these probabilities, we would of course go with outcome equal to one. And indeed, if we look at what was in our test data set, um, that outcome is indeed one. So, so we did a good job, we, or we trained our model well, um, it predicted the right um, result. We can look at our um, accuracy scores. Um, so those are our mean error rates. Uh, we can look at the score for our training set. So how close is our um, input with, uh, how close is the inference from our input to the actual um, targets on our training data set. And then let's look at that for the test set as well. Um, so you see that you get about 78% correct for the training set and about 77% for the test set, okay? Um, that means, I mean, that's a, a reasonable agreement. Um, what we of course expected is that our training set would do better than our test set. So after all, we trained it on the training set. So this will always be better than the test set. So a fundamental thing to remember, training data will always have a, or test data will always have a worse um, accuracy or a larger loss, um, a larger mean squared error than the training data. One of the things we can do um, in this logistic regression is we can start playing around again with some of these hyperparameters of our training algorithm. So if we look at um, lo logistic regression with tab, you'll see that there's um, several parameters. The main one here is this regularization strength. We talked about regularization before, um, and that is intended to keep those W's small, the weights small. Um, if we allow our weights to become large, then we might overtrain, um, and, uh, and that's of course not something that we want. Um, it also allows us to suppress um, the to suppress um, correlations that might just be statistically insignificant. Okay, we can change this C, and, and as you I clicked it away, but if you look at this, it says that C is the inverse of the regularization strength. So a smaller number will be more regularization, will require smaller values um, for the weights. 
So let's do a logistic regression training um, session for C equals to 0 0.01, 100. Um, and then let's do one for C equal 100. So this is uh, um, little regular regularization. This is a lot of regularization because it's inversely related. So we get a different, different set of coefficients, um, a different accuracy um, for both the training and the test data set. And then even for the case of, uh, of a large value for C, we get a different um, training and test set accuracy. Now, of course, what you'd want to do is compare this with our default value. And I think the default value is probably C equal to one. Um, and uh, so what you see is that um, we do slightly better on the training data set here, but we don't care about the training data set. Um, what is important is this test data set. Um, and so the default value of C equal one is actually the one that gave us the best error rate um, for, uh, uh, for our test data set. And now let's plot um, our coefficients for all of those, um, those values. Uh, and so again, uh, I switch back to matplotlib here. But one of the things you'll see is that you get a lot, slightly po positive correlation for pregnancies. Um, then there's a little bit of an impact from body mass index. But the main impact is actually here um, in uh, this pedigree function, even though there's some dependence there on um, this, uh, this coefficient of, uh, um, of regularization. So this both points out um, a way in which we can get more accurate results by tweaking our hyperparameters or our learning parameters, things that don't have anything to do with the data. Um, but it also allows, you know, it also can um, can be tricky because it uh, um, it, it could cause these um, these uh, ill-defined um, coefficients to uh, to appear. So where um, it seems like there's not a lot of uh, a lot of confidence in this. Um, now, since we of course believe the C equal one best, um, I do think that um, you know we, we should conclude from this that uh, um, that uh, the pedigree function has a strong predictive um, power to the probability for um, the outcome. So, so this is an example of uh, of logistic regression again applied to to diabetes. Now, not predicting a score that is um, a continuous variable, but that is. Uh, um, an, an outcome that is a class zero or one. Um, so I hope that now by having seen both um, linear regression and lo logistic regression, um, you'll be able to, uh, to use this in, in some of your work.